Hello everyone, my name is Patient Gao, and this is our work collaborate with Fudan University. Gearbox, a hierarchical package scheduler for approximate weighted fair queuing. Let's start with the background. Let's take a look of the evolution of package scheduling. Um, starting from the early 90s, people have been working on the package scheduling algorithms for different goals, including minimizing flow completion time and providing the weighted maximum fairness on the bandwidth as well as minimizing the tail packet delay. For each different purpose, um, the academia has come with multiple different scheduler algorithms of them. And among all, most of them, actually, the logic is to calculate a scheduling order for each packet and put that order as a rank for each packet. For the scheduler, they just need to sort those packets and serve them in the escalating order. So for the scheduler implementation, um, the academia and industry has been working on this. And for recent year on the trend of programmable data plane, um, the academia has come with multiple um, scheduler designs. And Gearbox is among one of them. So the big background actually is the programmable trend of the data plane. And for today, the most work is focused on the programmability of the packet parser the parser, and the match action table. So the packet scheduler, which is a major function in the switch, is remain simple, which means we need better programmable packet schedulers. So let's take a look of the challenge in packet scheduling. Let's say we need to support a rather large buffer size, around 60K packets, and we have a rather large flow counts on the switch. So um, we want to sort all these packets based on the rank or order which is assigned by the scheduling algorithm. But um, let's say we have a line rate of 100 gigabit on Ethernet, and we want to schedule packets with 64 bytes. We only have less than seven nanoseconds to process each packet. So it will be really challenging to like, sort all these packets or maintain a large flow queues for each flow. So according to um, today's uh, recent papers, uh, the academia finds Canada Q is a good candidate to do such job. So the Canada Q refers to a number of strict priority queues, which um, as is assigned with a specific rank or rank range, and the package just need to enqueue into the FIFO or the queues that associate with their rank. So the ad advantage is rather like easy to find. So it's fast and simple. It's just FIFO in queue. And it's based on FIFO. They can support a rather large buffer size. However, the disadvantage is also obvious. Since we only have a limit number of FIFOs, and each FIFO stands for a certain rank, rank range, we have a maximum rank we can accommodate to the calendar queue. If packets have a rank that is larger than the maximum rank, they will cause calendar range overflow, and they will be dropped. So Canada Q is a good candidate for such packet scheduler, but we need to overcome its disadvantage. So um, after, before we take a deeper look of how to solve this, let me introduce the concept of the granularity of the scheduler. So granularity here refers to, refers to the timestamp range that each FIFO covers. So in this previous example, we have 10 FIFOs. And the granularity is one means each FIFO cover one certain time range. So in this case, this calendar queue can only cover the timestamp from zero to nine. And packets with burstness or packets with like low flow rate will be dropped. So a pretty straightforward solution is to choose a coarser granularity. Let's say we still have 10 FIFOs and we raise the granularity to 10. Now this calendar queue can cover the time range from zero to 99 and the packets in this example can safely enqueue all the, enqueue this calendar queue. However, the, the sacrifice of this is also obvious. Uh, because in each FIFO, the packet is served in the first come, first serve base. So there might be some scheduling errors inside each FIFO. So that will cause some like, extra delay for the packet with like, the small timestamp being queued after the packets with large timestamp. So it is not a good idea to always choose a coarse granularity. Now the question is, what is an appropriate granularity we want to choose? To answer that question, 
we first need to understand the impact of such scheduling errors on each packet. Let's take this example. So um, for each packet, we can say they, they are assigned with a timestamp and they do have an expected delay based on that timestamp. However, due to the granularity that they may blur the difference of the timestamp within one FIFO, the packets might experience extra delay, which we call departure time discrepancy. So we came to this term, the normalized discrepancy, is to measure how large the, the delay discrepancy is compared with the expected delay of each packet. Let's take an example. Let's say we have this pink packet with the expected delay of 0.1 milliseconds, and it is put into the first FIFO, which covers the time range from zero to one milliseconds. So for this packet, it substitutes to a delay discrepancy of 0.9 milliseconds, but when compared with its expected delay, it ex experienced nine times more delay than it ex expected, which is not good. However, if we take a look of another packet, like enqueue the same scheduler with the expected delay of 3.1 milliseconds, according to the same granularity, it may still suffer from the same maximum discrepancy of 0.9 milliseconds. However, when compared with the expected delay of this packet, it's only appearance like less than 30% of the actual delay, which is, is acceptable in this way. So this gives us an insight that for different packets with different expected delay, we should schedule them with different scheduler accuracy or the granularity. So let me introduce our design, Gearbox. Let's come to the same example we had before. We can find the packets with the um, small expected delay are queuing up into the same FIFO, and packets with larger expected delay might be dropped because of the calendar range overflow. So our idea is to extend the design to multiple levels with different granularities. We can see the packets with the small uh, expected delay are moved into the lower level. The lower level provides a fine granularity, and they can differentiate the small difference in the scheduling order or the timestamp. And for packets with intermediate expected delay, we put them into the middle level, which can cover a wider range of the finish time, and also they can provide a relative satisfying discrepancy for these packets. And for other packets with really, really large finish time and really large expected delay, Rather than just simply drop them because of the Canada range overflow, we put them into the higher level. So since they already has a relative large expected delay, they are not like that sensitive to those introduced by this level. So that would be the basic idea of the box, serving different packets and expected delay with granularities. Then let's take a look of the DQ process of Gearbox. So let's say the system virtual clock reach 100. So we want to DQ the packets with a timestamp of 100. We can find that um, each level have a current serving FIFO that covers the current system virtual clock, which means when system clock is 100, the packets with a timestamp of 100 could appear in either three of these this FIFOs. So let's start with um, the FIFO in level one. So for level one, the granularity is one. That means all the, all the packets in the current server FIFO have the timestamp of 100. So it would be good to serve all the packets inside of it. And when we come to um, level two, this current server FIFO cover the finish time range from 100 to 109. And like approximate 10% of the packets inside of it have the timestamp of 100. But since the FIFO already messed up with the order inside of it, it is okay that we serve the first 10% of packet inside of it. Likewise, we're gonna serve first 1% of the packets in the current serving FIFO in level three. So this DQ process gives us the advantage of make the DQ process and simple. We don't need to look up all the packet inside each FIFO. We just decode them reverse proportionally to the time range they cover. And each packet is only accessed once. That means one in queue and one.
process. So let's come back to the normalized discrepancy I mentioned before. Uh, what is the normalized discrepancy we provide by the gearbox? We can see we trade different packets with different expected delay with different granularity. That means um, in gearbox, the expected delay will be always larger or equal to the departure time discrepancy. This means we can guarantee a maximum normalized discrepancy bound of one. And to be more tangible, this means a packet at the worst case will experience um, the delay that is equivalent to its expected delay. Let's take a look of our uh, evaluation and implementation. So our evaluation consists of two parts. The first part is uh, an S2 based software simulation and the other part is an FPGA based hardware prototype. For our software simulation, we build a three, three level factory topologies with 256 hosts. And we try to uh, generate the TCP flows according to this flow size distribution provided by the PFabric paper. For comparison, we have a bottom line of FIFO and we compare it with Canada Q with different granularity. The CQ1 is Canada Q granularity of one Q10 is granularity of 10, CQ100 is Canada Q with granularity of 100. So let's first take a look of the flow completion time performance here. Um, the red line here is the ideal weighted for queuing running on ideal PIFO. So that means uh, the best case. And we can see the purple line, gearbox, has the almost identical flow completion time performance as the ideal case. So we can take a deeper look on the breakdown of the flow completion time on different flow sizes. We can find that for small size flows, um, Gearbox can guarantee a low normalized flow completion time as the, like the perfect PIFO does. And as for the Canada Q with a rather cool granularity and for FIFOs, they are like, because of error by the FIFO, um, those small size flows are from the actual delay caused by the queuing delay. And for the, for the flow, relative larger sizes, um, our design do not bring the flow completion time a lot because we don't cause that much of the calendar range overflow and we don't, don't cause that much of packet loss. And let's take a look of the delay performance and uh, um, packet loss. So we can see that for these small size flows, our, our design can provide a decent end-to-end -end delay just as the ideal case, the, the ideal pipe for running weighted fair queuing. And if we take a look of the packet loss percentage, we can find the CQ1, which is the Canada Q with a fine granularity. They will cause a lot of Canada range overflow and lead to packet loss for the flows with rather large size. And for our design, the packet loss is maintained in a relative low level. For our hardware-based implementations, we implement our design in an FPGA board, um, the, the FPGA car U250. Uh, and for the resource we use, we use less than 4% of the resource provided by this FPGA. And we can reach an operation frequency of 350 megahertz and reach uh, the full 100 gigabit Ethernet line rate with the packets larger than 123 bytes. For conclusion, um, so this is our design, Gearbox. It's a hierarchical packet scheduler for approximate weather effect queuing. For the performance, we can have the almost identical flow completion time performance as an ideal weighted file queuing running on an ideal PIFO. Due to our design, our scheduling process is fast and simple so that we can keep up with the line rate. And we only use a limited number of FIFOs. And I want to um, emphasize this hierarchical is for the logical hierarchical. So basically, we only need levels of FIFOs inside the data plane. And we just arrange them logically into a hierarchical way. So it's only relied on a limit number of FIFOs and it's easy to in the programmable data plane these days. And we provide flexible scheduler granularity for packets with different expected delay. Also, we can support a wide range of bandwidth selection because we can cover a large uh, timestamp range. 
For our next step, we're going to explore whether Gearbox has the potential to be a generic PyFall or a generic packet scheduler. So we're going to test whether other scheduling schemes than the VTF queuing would run well on our Gearbox. And like, that's our next step of our extension. Thank you, everyone. I'm willing to take questions.